Yes. The uh, photo that you just showed there, um, Peter, of the um, development, that's where I used to live, in Labane, at Newstead. Please tell me that was well... Yeah, I certified it. It's beautiful. Great. I'm no longer there. It doesn't matter, but I'm just good, glad to hear that. Okay. We've got a few questions coming through. Please, if you want to send questions through or else uh, put your hand up, we can take the questions from the audience. Okay. In regards to the reversion fitting... Um, emergency for protection and one metre of copper before the appliance. When replacing the cooktop, for example, the install will need to be brought up to standard. Does the date of the original install affect the need to upgrade? I presume that's for me, is it? I'm going to say Not yes. For me. Not for me. <laughs> Fire? Please put the name if there's someone in particular, because I'm just reading them out. Sorry. Yes. Sure. So from what I can make out, He's saying that does the date of the original install have anything to do with bringing it up to the current standards? Um, the Act and the regulation, both uh, the Petroleum and Gas Act and regulation states that your safety certificate, you're certifying that the system at that point is compliant to the minimum requirements. Um, obviously, the minimum requirements would be 5601 Part 1 2022. That's, that's it. So you'd have to bring it up to the current standards no matter the date. If you're giving it a compliance certificate, that's the case. The only thing that would be retrospective would be the excess flow valve because it states as a note in the standard. Um, and another example would be the existing kitchen with the domestic, uh, with the clearance to the range hood. Hope that answers it. Sorry, I'm going through all my questions. Did that answer? Are you happy with that? Yep. Thumbs up. Okay, let's go down here uh, to Peter. Shouldn't this training be included in apprenticeships? Yes. I, I have the same... I was really interesting about uh, attracting plumbers to the trade. I, did, I had a meeting with the master painters the other day and, and the master painters were bitching about they can't get apprentices because they all want to be plumbers. So it's really interesting. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, it should be. I think it's touched on, um, but it's, an, it's a really deep expert area and expecting the TAFE teachers to understand it all is a challenge. Um, but um, I've been pushing to the manufacturers, as in the, the manufacturers of those products, to put together some training more for TAFE. So, okay, here's, here's something that we can put together. Um, just some understanding of the importance and understanding of how they work is a really good start because ignorance is pretty huge. Yeah, it's, you want to be reactive, not because, um, as you said, when the fire has happened, it's too late then, isn't it? And then it's like, oh, hang on, we better change something. So agree. All right, like this, Peter, you're getting slammed here with questions. Is a destructive investigation required for AS 1851 inspection? Have I said that right? Yeah, the, yeah, this is a four-hour answer. So 1851 is... Uh, ongoing inspection, so it's in the fire world, so it's penetrations as well as your sprinklers and whatnot. 1851 says what's visible, you inspect what's visible, so it's not an audit of everything, it's just that. So the answer is no to destructive, um, and it's probably only if you're in the fire world that's going to affect you, it's probably not a plumbing issue. In the passive world, um, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist because it's all every building gets certified completely right first time. All right. That was sarcasm, just by the way. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Do I need... a oh, Pete's for you again. Do I need to add any new penetrations to register? Uh, yes. So if you're going in um, and the downstairs retail has a dentist going in and we're going to put some holes in the floor, they've got to be done and, the, and that should be added to the building register. The saving grace there is... Mm, less than 5% of buildings in town have registers. But you need to certify your work, so create a register for your work. So absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Very quiet bunch out here today. All right, so we're talking about the changes. I think you all spoke about that. How is, you know, like reading all the documents, keeping up with the changes, it's not that easy. And these guys are working very hard out there in the field. Um, is there a more simpler way or is there some way that these, I don't know, a bullet point newsletter, is there some, like you, you did, I'm going to say dumb it down for us today, but only because I understood it. These guys probably could have handled it a lot harder. Um, is there some easier way of doing it? I mean, you can all answer this because you're, you all spoke about it. 
I'll go. Um, so, obviously, the Master Plumbers Association, that's what we do. We're there to relay that information over, hopefully get it out to the masses, um, keep everyone informed. Um, we try our best to do so. Uh, seminars and stuff like that, you get the same faces at. The people that don't turn up are the ones that you want to talk to. Uh, so that's the tricky bit, I guess. Um, but yeah, look, I would say that a majority of our members um, are about on and all over the changes, which is really good. So same with uh, the Backflow Association. Um, so yeah, we're, we're the same. Um, all our members get all notifications of what's going on um, and the changes that are happening. Um, like Stuart just said, being a member of Master Plumbers is always a good thing to get all that information as well. Um, I don't know how we're going to get it out to the other plumbers, but there needs to be something to get out to them because they just don't know, unfortunately, which is an issue that we need to sort out. But then it's even got to be passed down to all the staff as well. Like, so it's okay that they do come to the seminars and so forth. Um, but as I said, a lot of people are time poor. So how do you get it out there to the masses? And I guess, yeah, the ones that aren't coming to the seminars. Any solutions your end? <laughs> Look, what, what I find is once you've been hammered with a post-completion defect $10,000 repair, the next job tends to be done properly. So it's that experience by costing. Um, and once you've done that, um, we've done some recently where it was defected and the, the plumber, it was the plumber and the electrician both had problems. Both of them sent their site, some of their site guys to witness how the repair was done. And we did as a training session as to how to not do it that way and also um, why this is an, an issue. Um, that was you know, valuable experience. So. Um, I would suggest don't have to go down. You don't want to go that path to learn, but it, it does, money does talk when people pay lots of money to fix it. So maybe should the consumers be a little bit more aware of some of the changes? I do think so, yeah. I think public notifications would be good for the actual public to understand what's going on. But that, does, that comes from, obviously, QBCC, which they're trying to do, as well as the regulatory requirements and local government talking with their taxpayers and everything else that goes there. I also think uh, CPD comes into it as well with um, our seminars, for example, if we've got business owners rocking up, same as we will have here, predominantly business owners here, I'd say rather than employees. And what happens is the subjects that we talk about get passed down, second-hand information, um, and then obviously you're not getting quite the, the right grasp on what we're trying to comprehend, I guess. Um, having CPD in there and it making it compulsory, your staff are going to have to attend these events to get enough credibility for the year sort of thing. So maybe that is going to assist moving forward. Yeah. I agree with the CPD points in that space. Um, with that also, they are, I suppose they get more information from what's coming out with the standards, all the updates and everything like that, as we're all aware, they change quite rapidly, yeah. uh, especially with the codes and everything like that. Um, CPD points gives them opportunity of keeping on top of all of that, so yeah. Because um, this is nothing to do with plumbing, but I mean, I'm gonna say that uh, we've just done a renovation. Yes, we did do plumbing, but exhaust fans in the bathroom. So I went and bought my exhaust fans and the guy goes, you know that you can't do that internally in your ceiling now, that it has to be filtered out. And I said, no, I had no idea. So then I go back to my person and say that. So why I'm saying that is because that was the actual retailer telling me. So couldn't it sort of even be on that level? Definitely, yeah, for sure. I think the, the other elephant in the, in the room currently is uh, B-Days, and especially with backflow prevention. Um, they do require high hazard protection. Um, people go on holiday to Asia and they see these B-Day toilets and think, oh, yeah, get one of those. Um, you can get them from, obviously, reputable companies, um, but there's a lot of confusion around the uh, backflow requirements on them. Um, consumers need to be aware that Obviously, it's a high hazard and that potentially it's a, a high hazard backflow prevention device required. Uh, there is a few out there uh, that we can use without so, but they need to be aware of that as well. So, again, a campaign for customers to know what they're buying and know the implications of the costly non from that. 
But then, so I guess what I'm saying is for us to find out though, the retailers should know. So they're selling the product, I understand that, but shouldn't they just give us a little bit more advice on what actually is involved in installation? I think some will, I do. Um, I can tell you to, some don't. Just to plug the B-Day shop, um, they seem to be all over uh, the Oh, well, they're exceptional. The details. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm sure there's retailers out there that will give you that information, but if you're buying something online, you're not going to have that connection. No, that's connection, right. So. Yeah, so that makes it hard then in the whole scheme of things. Hmm, all right. Anyone else got questions or solutions? Oh, good on you, Bill. I knew you would. Thanks, Lee. Um, Peter, the uh, Australian Standards are talking about using plastic pipe now for, for fire lines. How, what are your feelings on that? So I had a picture of it. That's the orange CPVC. Um, used predominantly a lot on the Gold Coast because of um, the rust of metal. Um, there are treatments for it. The huge problem with it is it's not compatible with much. So there are some jobs now where the cork that's been used is incorrect um, and it's starting to leach and leak and blow. Um, and from a construction point of view, sequencing it's much better because I can build walls and it's much easier to join, whereas when I've got you know, metal pipe, we've got long lengths and we're trying to have as minimal joints as possible. So uh, it's compliant. I, I think potentially it's going to be an issue we're going to be dealing with very shortly. Did I answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Gee, you're very quiet. All right. It's now, would you guys like to sort of sum up um, what you have discussed on stage today and uh, the biggest takeaway tip that you would suggest everyone here to, uh, if they take away one thing, because there's been a lot of stuff that we've discussed here over the last two days. So uh, their takeaway point, if you could, one by one, that'd be great. <laughs> Go first. I'll go first. Um, uh, with that, I think all the information that has been presented over the past couple of days has been excellent. Um, very informative. Um, the one thing that I think we need to take away from it is the plumbing industry is a big industry and we're doing really well with what's going on, especially through Master Plumbers and every other association. Um, we just need, um, you know, we need to work together, I think, more in that space. But yeah, no, definitely it is something that is, as you can see, is a very popular trade in that space, so yeah. Well, it sort of affects so many areas, doesn't it? You know, when you look at what we have been speaking about. Thanks, Lee. Hey, um, Adam, with the, with the um, if I go out and test a backflow for Billy Bloggs Plumbing Proprietary Limited, apparently now that's a breach of the QBCC Act, which is totally bloody ridiculous in my opinion, because I'm a, I'm a licensed um, in, uh, tester and, you know, and my understanding always was that any plumber can install a backflow prevention device, but he can't test it unless he's certified, which I am. So, you know, I've done a lot of testing for other plumbers um, who, have, uh, who have not got testers on their staff. And then now I've been told that that is illegal, that I should not be doing that because... Uh, uh, and I can't for the life of me think why it would be illegal. It'd be no different to me doing a plumbing job for, for another plumber. Uh, but, you know, I'm certified to do the testing. Any plumber, any licensed plumber can install a backflow prevention device. But then the QBCC are saying no, that, I've, that, that I'm breaching the law by doing that. So I just want to hear your comment on it. Um. Well, uh, yeah, so under my understanding is under the Act and the regulations, you can go out and do the test for somebody else as long as you've done the endorsement, which obviously you have, and you've got been revalidated in that space. Um, yeah, I, I can't see why that isn't... that. Sorry, yeah. I can probably add a little bit to that. So I believe it comes down to... Um, holding the appropriate licence class to what you're contracting for. So you have to hold that endorsement to give instruction um, or contract for that stream. So that's where the confusion is. Um, Hang on, I'm going to give you the mic so everyone can hear. 
sorry, the hydraulics consultant designs where the backflow is going to go. Um, as I said, any licensed plumber can install that backflow device and then it's up to another individual to test it. Now, if they're not on the same company, I still can't see where there's a, where there's a problem. I totally agree. Thank I do. Um, I, it's just the way it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you missed that word. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I was, no, no, that's no one heard you swear. It was okay. And, you know, Peter was doing such a great job up there, non swearing. Okay, so we're going along with your takeaway. So, how are we up going along? Sure, I think um, it highlights the uh, importance of associations, um, backflow association, uh, master plumbers, the QGA for gas. Um, it, it's fundamental for the information getting to the right people, um, keeping up to date. It's part of your job. Uh, you need to be following the guidance and following the regulations, and if they change, it's your responsibility to keep up with it. Um, if you're part of a, uh, an organisation, then you're going that extra mile and it makes it a bit easier. So if you're not a member, join up. Nice little plug there too. Okay, Peter? Uh, fire is really important. It's life safety um, and coroner's court's not pretty. Um, do it right. Oh, there you go, straight to the point. All right, last chance. Oh, we're for a question. Good on you. Yeah, real quick one for Adam. Is the local government still giving out the QR code tags to stick on the backflow devices or are they assuming they're all done by now? <laughs> yes. Uh, to my knowledge, yes, they are, um, depending on what the local authority is that you're in because I don't think all local authorities are actually doing the QR code. There's only, to my knowledge, Logan and possibly Moreton Bay, but to, I don't know if they've all done, been done. So, yeah, but I believe they are still handing them out. All right. Very quiet. They're speechless. It's quite unusual to see this. All right. Well, you guys have done a great job and we do appreciate you coming along and sharing your knowledge and collaboration seems to be the, the answer all through all of the uh, sessions we've had. So would you please put your hands together for our wonderful team up here, Stuart, Adam and Peter. Thanks, guys. <laughs>